for the reading of today's gospel. Our gospel can be found on page 862 in your pew Bibles. John chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Do we have any children who'd like to come forward for the kids' message? Oh, I'm so happy to see you. I was so lonely at the last two services. We didn't have any kids. You can come closer. Come closer so you can see. I really am happy to see you all this morning. Well, what did I bring here? What is this? A globe. Good. A globe. What does a globe show us? What's the point? The earth? Okay. Land? How do I know which parts are the land? The green parts? Okay. How do I know which parts are the, are the ocean? Well, then what's all this white stuff? Oh, those are clouds. Oh, okay. This is actually a pretty cool globe because if, you, if we turned off all the lights right now, it would glow where the city lights are. It's pretty, it's pretty groovy. Um, so who made this? Who made the earth? Not this globe. This was probably, yeah, God. You guys are right on it. God made the earth. That's pretty awesome when you think about it. So when God made the earth, we just heard a story where it talked about how God did this. God spoke and we have earth. God said, let there be light, and there was what? God said, let there be trees, and there was? God said, let there be mosquitoes, and there were? I know, right? We still wonder about that one. but And God said, let there be people, and then we have you and me, right? And God loved what he made. God loved God's creation so much that he called it okay he called it good right he looked at the earth and then remember he looked at the stars that were around it and he said oh, i love my creation it is so good and then when god made you and me god said we are very good so what's so good about the earth what do you think were the things that god loved so much about what god created what do you think What's good about our earth? Us. We're good. Yeah, we're, we try really hard sometimes, yeah, to be good. What's that? Animals, right? We lo- oh, we've got animals, and those are pretty good. What else? And that God made friends for us so that we're not lonely. Yeah, God gave a help, helpers. All of this is good. And so we're going to talk about in my sermon today all the things that make creation good. But God gave us a special job. God looked at God's people and said, you have a special job to take care of this earth. How do we take care of this earth? Not littering. littering. Good job. Well, How else can we take care of this earth? We can be kind to one another, right? We can take care of each other. We can save water, right? We can recycle. There's a lot of things we can do to take care of this earth. But God tells us that it's our job to help take care of this earth. So as I tell my story today, I want you to listen for all the ways that earth is good. All the goodness in in our world and all the goodness that we have. Will you pray with me? Let's pray. And there are bad things happening to the earth, so we have a lot of work to do. Yes. Yes. 
Oh. Right, right. We have our, some of our animals are dying. But we're going to pray, and then you can tell me after church all about it, okay? But we're going to pray, and then I can't wait to hear after church. Will you pray with me, dear God? Thank you for creating this earth, and thank you for creating each one of us. Thank you for calling us good. Help us, Lord, to continue to live into this goodness each day as we take care of your earth and each other. Amen. Thank you. You can go back and sit with your families. Okay. Okay. Okay, sounds good. I thought he was going to give the sermon for me. (laughs) Well, grace and peace to you from God, our creator, and from Jesus, who is the word made flesh. Today's readings from Genesis and from the Gospel of John are two of the most familiar passages in the Bible. It presents a story that we have heard more times than we can count. But it is not a story for the history books, over and done with and put on a shelf to collect dust. This is a story that is timeless and is continually unfolding. Because the same God who started it all in the beginning of creation is still creatively active in the world and in each of us today. And as we hear again those beautiful lines of poetry in Genesis 1, we find the key refrain that runs through this passage of Scripture, God saw that it was good. This affirmation of the goodness of creation is perhaps the clearest part of this story. Six times we hear this refrain. And this is something that I think that we can all agree on. Stand in awe of the rich colors of sunset or marvel at the beauty of a mountain stream or feel the sand between your toes at the beach. And it is easy to say that all creation is good. Yet on closer inspection, when you really start to watch nature, you find that there seems to be a war going on in nature. I'm not talking about the natural disasters like hurricanes or tornadoes or earthquakes that can be so devastating. I'm talking about the day-to-day wars that go on. You may think that as you walk through the park, you're experiencing a peaceful day, a lovely day. But if you stop and you look more carefully you'll notice that there is a war going on all around you. Everything is eating everything. Everything is consuming life to stay alive. The grass is just trying to be green, but it's constantly being eaten by bugs. And the bugs are trying to do bug things, but they're constantly being eaten by bigger bugs or birds. And the birds, well... Their eggs are getting eaten by snakes or raccoons or bigger birds or by the friendly house cat, and so it goes. The poet Alfred Lord Tennyson reflected on this reality about nature in a famous poem in which he confessed that nature is red in tooth and claw. I remember a couple of years ago, I had a house filled with kids when my friends were visiting. It was a rainy day. And so we resorted to TV watching to pass the time. And I had had my share of cartoons. I was over it. So I turned on the Discovery Channel, thinking, there's something for everyone on the Discovery Channel. And I found a program about orca whales. And I thought, this looks great. Who doesn't love orca whales, right? Well, as we watched, we learned about the intelligence of the orca, their resourcefulness, their ability to organize and to work as a team, and all was good and all was beautiful until this pod of intelligent orcas organized an attack on a pod of narwhal whales. And the result was this violent display of power and aggression in which the ocean water turned red with blood and the pod of narwhals was decimated. 
Well, Grady, the four-year-old, was the first to say something. He looked at me with these big, sad eyes, and he said, I don't think we're supposed to be watching this. <laughs> and I looked around the room, and there's other little faces with tears. Some had that glazed over look of shock. And I thought, we better go back to the cartoons. How do we reconcile these images of nature doing what nature does? With this refrain in Genesis, God saw that it was good. What does it mean to say that creation is good? Well, first, I believe that creation is good because God, in creation, God is revealed. Everything that happens in Genesis 1 depends upon the God who creates it in verse 1. So often we get caught up in conversations and even arguments about the details of how creation came to be or how long were those actual days in the creation story. So much time and energy gets wasted on these conversations because they miss the point. Genesis is not a textbook. Genesis is not a book of science. The focus of this story is not about how, it's about who. It's about God, the God who speaks, the God who reveals, the God who creates. Creation reveals that God is the almighty creator. God literally speaks creation into being. He says, let there be light and there is light. God says, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters and there was sky. With a word, God creates. And creation is good because it reveals God's power and God's genius as the architect and maker of everything. Creation is a gift, not a given from the almighty creator. Creation is good because it also reveals God's kindness and generosity and graciousness. Creation is good because God in God's goodness and generosity takes care of it. Jesus says, God dresses the lilies of the field, God feeds the birds of the air, and God causes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust alike. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world. And in the Greek, the word is actually cosmos, and I like that word better. God so loved the cosmos that God gave his one and only son. We see here that the world, God's creation, is good by virtue of the fact that God loves it. In all the interconnected relationships of this world around us, they speak to the power of God, and they also speak to God's genius. There's an artistry in creation. And perhaps the most obvious thing about the opening chapter of Genesis is its structure in terms of six days. There's beauty in this structure of this poem. And if you look closely, the, the days are not listed as some linear sequence, day one, day two, day three. Rather, they are beautifully arranged into two groups, days one through three and days four through six. On the first three days of creation, God creates habitats. On the next three days of creation, God fills those habitats. And it all gets summarized in Genesis 2-1. Thus, the heavens and the earth were completed. God formed them and God filled them. And God said it was good. And this good creation that God has made is conducive to life all biological life, parasites, microbes, eagles, whales, and especially human life. And even more than being conducive to life, all of life has been created with a purpose. Everything in creation is oriented around a purpose, even if it's not always obvious to us or useful to us or beneficial to us. There is a functional integrity to creation. After all, God does not make junk. I mean, you don't find a pack of wolves loitering in a park. 
somewhere. They're busy. You never see an army of ants not hard at work. Even mosquitoes, as hard as it is to believe, even mosquitoes have a purpose beyond annoying us. And God's goodness doesn't stop with just making things work well. God enriches creation with beauty, and it is in the beauty where God really shows off. God is not just this left-brained engineer or mathematician. God also has this right brain working like an artist or a poet or a musician. And we see this in the poem of Genesis. Notice how after God creates, God looks at God's creation and says, I did a really good job. God at heart is an artist who simply enjoys making stuff. God loves creation. Think about it. God created whole galaxies, billions of stars that no one will ever see. And not only that, God has also created creatures that none of us will likely ever see. Like the artist who just creates paintings or drawings because she loves to create and to see and enjoy the beauty even if the paintings are never seen or sold, so too with our God. Creation is good, and that creation is enriched with beauty to be seen and enjoyed by creatures like you and me. And that does bring us to you and to me. We're that part of creation that God made on the sixth day, the part of creation that is made in God's own image and likeness. The part of creation that is upgraded from good to very good. Now while we share similar biology to monkeys and manatees, lions and lemurs, we are set apart. As beloved children of God and made in God's image, we are set apart. We learn that our purpose is more than being fruitful and multiplying. We find our purpose is being caretakers of God's good creation. God names us God's beloved children and calls us to participate in God's divine will, which affirms the goodness of God's creation in ourselves and each other and in all the world. But while we are made in God's image, we are not God. Inevitably, our sin will distract us from our purpose, and our selfishness will shift our priorities. And so God and God's goodness and love did not leave us alone in this creation. God spoke God's self into creation with us. Not just as God, the almighty architect and creative artist. We learn in our gospel reading that this creative word of God became flesh and made his home among us. God stepped into God's own creation with us through Christ. In the flesh and the blood of Christ, God endorses the goodness of creation by becoming a part of it. And in Christ's death, God reminds us that there is something deeply broken in creation. And in Christ's resurrection, God reminds us that there is a goodness to creation that we have not yet experienced. Because that same God who started it all in the beginning of Genesis is still creatively active in the world and in each of us. Our mission is to bear witness to God's goodness and to reflect God's great love for God's creation in the living of our own lives. In the words of one of my favorite poets and a great lover of creation, Wendell Berry, Wendell Berry says that we should love all creation in response to the Creator's love for for it. So as a part of my sermon today, I'm not going to lecture on all the ways that humankind has really made a mess of God's creation. I'm not going to get on my soapbox about the crisis of climate change or go on a tirade about recycling or about conserving water. Instead, I'm just going to challenge us to start by asking ourselves what it could look like if we live in a way that honors the goodness of God's creation. What could that life look like? And perhaps we start living this life by rereading God's poetry for us in Genesis 1 and by being attentive to God's presence in and among us. 
Perhaps we can experience God's loving presence when we come together in community to worship like this morning, or when we share a meal, or as we listen to God speak to us in that still, small voice when we sit in prayer. Perhaps more and more we will be empowered by the Spirit to challenge anything that disgraces the goodness of creation, whether that be war or hunger, poverty or injustice, discrimination, exclusion, greed, or exploitation. And then as beloved children of God, we can make it our mission to help usher in God's reign of peace and justice and generosity and abundance. After all, that is our job. We are made in the image of God. We are God's stewards. We are living in a place that we do not own, making full use of it, but always keeping in mind that we are caring for things that belong to somebody else. Friends, God looks at you and says, you are my beloved. You are very good. You are made with purpose. So let us live into this identity each and every day as we affirm the goodness of God in all of our creation. Amen.